Welcome everyone to the October TDL Member Forum. My name is Christy Park and I'm the Executive Director of the Texas Digital Library. As we gather in this shared virtual space during the week in which we celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, we'll start as we often do by acknowledging the physical places from which we're joining, all located on the Indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what is now called North America. I'm joining from Austin, where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal. And I invite you to share your own land acknowledgements in chat if you'd like to. Um, okay, we're gonna follow our usual agenda. We're joined by our Deputy Director, Courtney Muma, and Outreach Coordinator, Kira Hunt, in providing updates. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started with some director's updates. I wanna start out by acknowledging a couple of big events that took place this past month. One of those is the DSpace North America Users Group Meeting, which took place September 23rd through 25th in Minneapolis. The University of Minnesota Libraries hosted this event, and we had a, quite a few Texas folks attending and presenting at the meeting. Um, they're pictured here on this slide. I'm, I'm really so pleased TDL and its members were this well represented at this meeting and also thrilled that they did a reshoot of the Brady Bunch photo that got taken at the last DNOG in 2019. And I wanna say a special thank you to Nick Woodward, um, our DSpace tech lead, on the TDL staff and Emily Johnson, who's our current DSpace user group chair from UT San Antonio for serving on the planning committee for this event. And another big thank you to the TDL membership for everything you did to plan for and support the Open Texas 2024 conference, which took place last month, the same week as DNOG. Um, Texas librarians and library workers represented about half of our planning committee staff. We had 11 TDL member librarians participating in planning this event and a whole bunch more were represented in the program. Um, it was big success. We had more than a thousand registrants um, from over 80 Texas institutions, 32 states and seven countries. And the recordings uh, for, from the presentations are available for now through the CVENT platform for registrants. They'll be publicly available once we get them published to the Open Texas YouTube channel later this year. We are going to keep the OER momentum going with our next OER at TDL webinar, which will feature a panel discussion on open pedagogy led by our OER users group chair, Kate Carter from the University of Houston. Open pedagogy is becoming increasingly prevalent in institutions of higher education as a means of engaging with students as co-creators of knowledge. Librarians are well positioned to provide support for open pedagogy given their, their unique expertise in open licensing and assignment planning. And in this panel discussion, we'll hear from three librarians about how they are collaborating with faculty members to support open pedagogy at their respective institutions. Those three folks are listed here. Um, they're Ariana Santiago, who's the head of open education services at University of Houston. Tricia Boucher, Open Pedagogy Librarian from Texas State, and Lauren Ray, Open Ed Librarian from the University of Washington. They will share their favorite resources and best practices that attendees can utilize for growing open pedagogy support um, at your institution. So if you're working in open pedagogy or just interested in it, um, we hope you'll join us for this event. It will be November 6th at 1 p.m. You will need to register. Um, and this event will not be recorded. Uh, we don't record the OER at TDL events in order to encourage candid conversation. So please um, be ready to be there in person. It's gonna be a, a great event. Okay, switching gears um, just a bit. I know that most of you are aware that next week is International Open Access Week. 
But if OA Week is new to you, this is an opportunity for the academic and research community to continue to learn about and promote the potential benefits of open access, um, to share what they've learned with colleagues, to help inspire wider participation in helping open access become a new norm in scholarship and research. For 2024, OA Week will continue the call to put community over commercialization and prioritize approaches to open scholarship that serve the best interests of the public and the academic community. This is a theme, as you might imagine, that's close to TDL's heart. Um, Okay, I want to mention over the next couple of slides a couple of specific things going on for OA Week, starting with the Open Access Symposium, which is taking place next Friday, October 25th, <clears throat> from 9 to 4 on Zoom. Uh, the OA Symposium is hosted by UNT Libraries and the Texas State University Libraries. And the theme of this year's symposium is Open About Open. I know I'll be there and hope to see many of you in Zoom for discussions about navigating the current state of open and sharing in both the successes and the challenges um, of, of doing this work as a community. And finally, before we move into services updates, I wanna give you a little preview of another, another OA Week initiative um, coming from the Confederation of Open Access Repositories or CORE. So during OA Week next week, CORE, in collaboration with Eiffel, Creative Commons, and the Open Climate Campaign, will launch a global effort to activate institutional repositories as tools for climate action through what they're calling the Paper Pledge for the Planet. The Paper Pledge is a global collaboration of hundreds of institutions working together to make climate literature openly available. TDL will be involved in this, I hope, with many of you at our member institutions. So CORE has done the work to identify more than 3,500 climate change articles that have been published in the last five years that are currently closed access. They're behind a paywall. But because of the publisher's policies, they could be made openly available through green open access. For TDL's part, we'll be coordinating with our members to reach out to authors at your institutions to see if we can get those papers that are attached to and affiliated with your institution um, to get those papers into your institutional repositories. There are other ways you can participate in this initiative. Um, we'll be sharing out CORE's announcement next week about this. There will also be webinars coming up in November to provide more resources and strategies for recruiting climate scholarship for your repositories. And we'll share out those details as we have them as well. Okay, so we're gonna next move into our services and project updates, um, starting with digital repositories. Starting this week, Nick Woodward has begun updating TDL hosted DSpace repositories from version 761 to 762. This is a, a minor upgrade in terms of new features. Um, also in terms of downtime, there will be minimal downtime. It does include a number of bug fixes, accessibility improvements, and performance improvements. And um, you can see the full list of fixes in the 7.6.2 release notes. Upgrades will be taking place between 5 and 6 p.m. Central each day that we're doing them, and um, there will be just a couple of minutes of downtime during the upgrade. Nick will be generating a help desk ticket on the day that your upgrade is performed to notify you and keep you updated um, as we progress. With our open access journal hosting, we've been focused primarily on troubleshooting help desk tickets and on ongoing maintenance. Our system administrator, Nick Lawland, recently finished a project to upgrade certain themes across all of our journals because an older version of the theme was preventing the use of CAPTCHA during user account creation and login. He's also been applying more robust bot blocking on our OJS sites because the bots that had been causing issues with the DSpace sites have now found our OJS sites. 
Um, so we're making progress there. Our OJS users group continues to meet monthly on the first Thursday of the month, and we've lately been discussing the new ADA accessibility rule and how it applies to library journal publishing, among many other everyday issues that journal managers and the librarians supporting them are encountering. So we hope you'll join us if you're supporting library publishing at your campus. Our next OJS users group meeting will be November 7th at 10 a.m. So I think that's it for me, and I'm going to hand it to Courtney to continue with our service updates. So thank you, Christy. I just have a couple of updates. Um, the first for Vireo. Um, Frank will begin uh, the 4.2.9 upgrades to all TDL hosted Vireo 4 members this week. As a service contact, you should have received an email about scheduling that. If not, please reach out to us as soon as possible as we'd like to complete the upgrades by mid-November. Uh, like the DSpace upgrades, these are minor upgrades and they require very little downtime. Frank will be doing them between 10 and noon in most cases. Also, if you were unable to join us for the Vireo user group annual meeting last week, you can view it as well as the agenda slides and community notes on the TDL wiki. If you just look for Vireo user group annual meeting, I've also sent a message out to the Vireo user group with links to that and the recording. And for digital preservation services, I want to let you all know that World Digital Preservation Day is coming up November 7th. With the theme, Preserving Our Digital Content, Celebrating Communities, World Digital Preservation Day 2024 is a great opportunity to connect the digital preservation community and to celebrate the digital legacy of all types of communities around the world. The Digital Preservation Coalition, or the DPC, invites all data creators, archivists, curators, consumers, community members, and DigiPres folk from around the world to celebrate the diversity of the communities which surround and support us, while also drawing attention to the unique and valuable digital content which becomes their digital legacy. You can learn more about how to participate and about the WDPD 2024 tag on the Digital Preservation Coalition website for World Digital Preservation Day. Next up, we're going to have some community updates with our fabulous outreach coordinator, Kiara Hunt. Over to you, Kiara. Thanks, Courtney. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to share some community updates and upcoming events with you all. First up, to all of our friends in Dallas and North Texas, don't miss the sixth edition of the DFW Archives Bazaar happening Sunday, October 20th from 1 to 4 p.m. at O City Park. This event is free and features over 30 Texas libraries, archives, and other cultural institutions offering fun and interactive ways to learn more about the historical resources and services available in North Texas. TDL is proud to be a sponsor of the DFW Archives Bazaar. Next, if you're attending the virtual DLF forum happening October 22nd to 23rd, don't miss feature speaker Andrea Jackson Gavin, who's the program director for the HBCU Digital Library Trust. Andrea will present advancing the HBCU Digital Library Trust through relationship building during the opening plenary on October 22nd at 10 a.m. Central Time. The DLF Forum welcomes digital library, archives, and museum pensioners from member institutions and beyond, for whom it serves as a meeting place, marketplace, and Congress. Next, don't miss the 2024 STEM Library and South Conference happening November 6th to 8th. The 14th annual meeting will offer excellent learning opportunities for professionals at all levels of STEM librarianship. This year's theme is Share, Teach, Explore, and Make. And next up, we're counting down to the TDL GIS Intergroups Pre-GIS Day Celebration, taking place Wednesday, November 13th, from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Central Time. This year's event will be packed with exciting activities, presentations, and a few very special surprises. Here's what you can look forward to. Engaging presentations, geography-themed Zoom background contests, and a GIS bingo. 
So this should be something, there should be something for everyone. And you can look forward to all that information at the link on the TDL website. Next, here are more upcoming meetings and events happening at TDL. These meetings and events are free and open to anyone, and you're always welcome to invite your campus partners and non-TDL member colleagues and your network to join us. And some of those events include the Digital Preservation Interest Group, which was canceled this week. And we have on Friday, October 25th at 2 p.m., the GIS Interest Group Meeting. And on Monday, October 28th at 3 p.m., we have the DSpace User Group Meeting. And on Wednesday, November 6th at 1 p.m., we have the OER at TDL Supporting Open Pedagogy panel discussion, which Christy mentioned. And on Thursday, November 7th at 10 a.m., we have the OJS User Group Meeting. And also on November 7th at 2 p.m., we have the Imaging Group Meeting. So you can check out all of these meetings on our TDL.org events page. And we will also include our word November what's happening as well. Next up, check out the latest TDL updates and announcements for upcoming meetings, events, and programs on our social media channels and in our bi-monthly newsletter emails and listservs. And on that same note, if you would like to contribute to news, announcements, project updates, or other content to an upcoming issue of the TDL newsletter, please let us know at info at tdl.org with your ideas. And that's all for our community updates. For any questions, email us at info at tdl.org and I'll hand things back over to Christy. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Kiara, and thanks, Courtney, for all that good information. I just want to remind everybody that if you have any questions or suggestions for TDL that um, you want to send us uh, outside of this forum, um, you are welcome to do so either by emailing us at info at tdl.org or by using our anonymous feedback form um, linked to on this slide, and we'll be happy to get those suggestions or address that feedback um, in, in whatever way makes sense. Thank you all for attending and we'll see you next time. Take care.